I've received a number of questions about how to choose drawing pencils, and so that's what I wanted to address in this video. I'm Alvalyn Lundgren. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer. I do a lot of drawing and work with pencils a lot, so they're a very common tool. Despite the popularity of tablets and Apple pencils and so forth, I still prefer the more tactile sensibility that pencil and paper have. There's a different texture, there's a different cadence to drawing using the more traditional materials. And that's the way that uh, most folks start out, so uh, let's talk about these tools for a moment. There's a few different types of pencils, and I'm going to be talking here about graphite, not colored pencil. So graphite pencils are commonly known as lead pencils, and there's essentially two different types. There is the school pencil or working pencil, and that has the ferrule and the eraser on the end. A drawing pencil, on the other hand, does not have an eraser on the end. So when you actually start drawing and start thinking about the tools that you're using, the grade of pencil, the type of pencil you're using, becomes a lot more important. There are two different systems for grading lead pencils or graphite pencils. One of them is the numeric system, and the numeric system goes from one to four, and the most common of those is the number two. The higher the number, the harder the lead. So a number one pencil is going to be softer than a number two, and a number four will be harder than a number two. So that's the numeric system. Most drawing pencils are graded under the HB system, and H stands for hardness, B stands for blackness, so they're kind of opposite ideas. The harder the lead, the harder it is to get a really dark result when you're using it. So the HB graphite system uses numbers as well. The higher the number on either side of the scale, whether it's B on one side or H on the other, the greater the characteristic. So in other words, a 7B is going to be a lot softer or blacker than a 2B. On the other end, a 7H will be extremely hard compared to a 2H. The lead of the pencil is actually a mixture of graphite and clay. The more clay there is, the harder the lead is. The less clay, the softer. It's also interesting to note that between different manufacturers, there is no standard worldwide for pencil lead grading. So a 7B with one manufacturer might perform more like a 4B with another manufacturer. So it's up to you, the artist or illustrator, to try things out and see what you prefer. So another option you have is the lead holder. The advantage to these for drawing is, of course, the length of the lead itself. The other option you have are graphite sticks. And these are two different types of graphite sticks. And basically that's all it is, it's graphite. And these come in the various grades, starting on the H side all the way up the scale on the B side. And the advantage to these is that you don't have to worry about wood in the way, the, the wood of the pencil. This one sharpens with a regular pencil sharpener. and it's got a clear coating on it to uh, help keep your hands clean. This is actually more like a pastel stick. There is not really a coating on it, and your fingers will get dirty as you use this. This you would have to sharpen by hand with probably an X-Acto blade or a utility knife. Leads will come in something like this for this kind of pencil. This is used a lot more in drafting and technical drawing than it is in illustrative drawing. This is a lead pointer, and it's for this type of pencil and to sharpen the pencil, the end of the lead. Clean it off, and there you go. So understand that uh, with all the choices with uh, drawing pencils, it's all based on your own preferences, what you're comfortable working with. So try different varieties, different manufacturers, and different types of papers. 
and see what seems to be most comfortable and what works for you best. So now let's talk about ways of holding the pencil to maximize your drawing capability and range of motion. So when we write, we're usually writing in this kind of position where we're holding the pencil basically between three fingers. Uh, some people write like this, still kind of a three finger deal. And basically with this kind of grip, you are relegated to wrist movement pretty much only. You can get a little bit of arm movement, but your area, the, the, the range, the distance on the paper is small. and it can feel a little bit restrained or constricted to you. If we change the grip so that we're holding the pencil kind of with every finger, we have a much greater range of capability. We can change the line quality very quickly. We can switch back and forth fairly quickly. but this gives you much more full arm from the elbow, from the shoulder, and you can travel across the page a lot better. So you can cover the entire page with this kind of grip more easily than you can cover the page with this kind of grip. So when I'm drawing, I go back and forth. If you've looked at my other videos, you'll see that I'm constantly switching between the two grips and it's something I don't even think about. Once you get used to this and from going from this to this, you won't think about it anymore. You'll just draw. With this, it's easy to cover a large area. It's also easy to lay things in fairly quickly. And you can also change your grip as you go. So I'm not doing any of this very precisely, and I'm not trying to draw anything here of any consequence. I'm just showing you the capability of what's possible when you use a full range of motion and you hold your pencil in such a way that you can actually rotate your hand. This change of grip works no matter what kind of drawing tool you're using, and it works with any size sketchbook. So you can be working on a much larger 18 by 24 pad, or a sketchbook of this size, or a pocket size sketchbook. So if you haven't switched your grip very much before, just spend some time exploring the possibilities and making marks on your paper, switching back and forth, Just kind of play around with it, see how it feels, and go not just with a, a shall we say, a wrist motion. Uh, you'll have a whole arm and even get your whole shoulder going into the motion.